Hello, and welcome to the Northeast Ohio Media Group Candidate Debates. Thank you for joining us. I am Ray Jablonski. Today we are hosting a debate for the Bedford City Council Ward 4 seat up for election on November 3rd. Our, joining us today is Paula Mizak, who is the incumbent. Her challenger, Rick Broyak, is not here with us. We will now give uh, Ms. Mizak a chance to uh, introduce herself. Good afternoon. I'm Paula Mizak from the City of Bedford. It is an honor and a pleasure to be with you, Ray. Thank you. And I come with hopes and aspiration that I will be reelected in the fall, okay. in November, I should say. And how many years have you been on council? At the end of this term, I'll be 20. And this will be my eighth term if I should be elected by the constituents. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's been some widespread flooding that has occurred in this occurred in the city earlier this summer. Um, what is being done to keep that from happening again? Okay, we've had several areas that did flood. The, uh, the system for the storm sewers has been videotaped, checked. A lot of them have been cleaned out. They've also revamped them with uh, a new sleeve that goes through the original sewer system to help alleviate some of the um, branches and cloggings of the sewer so this won't happen again. A few of the homeowners, I believe it would be on Ellenwood Avenue, which is actually Ward 5, um, did have sewer, storm sewers replaced in their yards and they rerouted the, uh, the, the passageways to get to the main um, sewers. Okay. Uh, I know in Ward 4 and really throughout the city, there's a big uh, deer problem. Oh, and uh, what are your, what would you like to see done about um, that situation? I am surrounded by deer. Our neighbors are, we're comfortable. I believe the deer actually own our area. But there has to be some sort of limitation as to um, how much we can encumber in our area or have. Uh, they'll be culling most likely by the park system between January and March of 2016. Um, that does help feed a lot of people with the Cleveland Food Bank and other food banks that this is donated to, the, uh, the deer meat. I, the new ones, the babies are always beautiful, but if they lessen the population, it'll be a little bit more manageable for cars that go through our area and for the people that do like their flowers. Thank you. I don't have to say thank you. Um, staying, on the, staying on the residential aspect, should, uh, I know that uh, Bedford has recently started uh, charging for garbage and recycling pickup. Uh, I believe it's $14 per single unit um, and $20 for duplexes and double units. Should the residents be charged for that? Um, actually, the fee is $14 for single homes, $28 for the double. It's not actually, it doesn't actually involve the new garbage cans that people assume that was what they were paying for. It is a temporary fee that back in 2009 when we did charge for garbage and refuge, once we saw that our budget was getting ahead, we eliminated that fee. And this has also been told to our, um, all the people that were coming to our meetings in regards to the garbage program and the fee that had objections to it. It's a temporary fee, hopefully it will only be temporary as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's a fair fee and I know that other cities do charge more. And hopefully in time when we do see us get out of our deficit, we will be able to eliminate this completely. By temporary, how long are we, are we talking about? It all depends on how we, how we make out with, due, due to the loss of Benvenue, we, suffered a large hit as far as um, employees and taxes and and operational um, provisions from them 
and as soon as we can get ourselves up and rolling again, we'll have the fee. It's a uh, six month payment on your property taxes and most people it'll only cost them $84 for the six months on the tax bill and it will start in 2016. And other than that, as far as the length, it all depends on how our budget, if we're not at a shortfall, we may eliminate it within a year or two. That I really can't tell you. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how our city's faring at that time. Okay. And um, how deep is the uh, deficit right now? At, right now, I think we're looking <clears throat> at close to two million. There is a rainy day fund, but this will be there for emergency purposes at the present time. And if need be, if we did have to use this, we'll be out by 2018. And we'll have to start from scratch. But things are starting to move forward again. We have a good, we have a good council that we look, we're all looking out for the right thing to, and to do and, bring, and the right people to bring to Bedford to help us enhance our city and our constituents can live more comfortably. comfortably. Does the city, does the city, or are you looking into uh, ways of sharing services with neighboring communities? Um, perhaps that can cut, cut costs and um, eliminate the deficit as well. Most of our police and firefighters are already, we always have, the other cities, are, we all work together as a backup for each other. That it would be Maple and Oakwood and Bedford Heights and the surrounding areas. I myself, back when I first got elected in around 96 or my second term, started initiations to get the um, warning signals into our city. We did have a nice clog at that time. And other than that, for preventions, for our people, to be aware that there's going to be a problem, the sirens have done their job. And I believe that working together and going with the 911 dispatch to cover other communities at the same time and working like that is going to be a thing of tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. going to be there, regardless if you want to join or not. It's going to be mandatory that you have that mutual aid, and it's necessary. And uh, I understand that uh, Bedford is, um, at this point, they are housing prisoners from other communities, um, but you have a limited capacity in the city jail. Should there be, uh, should you be trying to expand the city jail or work on partnerships with other communities? What I understand, and really <clears throat> I don't get too involved with the police chief and in, in his way of running things for the jailers and the jail. Um, eventually, most of the prisoners will be going back to Bedford Heights. That date, I can't tell you exactly but we're working as teams in partnership with one another to figure out the proper way to house prisoners. And that's about the best I can tell you. Would that, would that be a cost savings though for the city? Not, well, I, that I really couldn't tell you because mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with that part of the, the city. I mean, I'm familiar with it, but as far as cost savings, I think the $85 a day that they were paying Bedford Heights, so we're getting the same amount right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's working out. I haven't heard anything or any negatives about this, this issue. I um, want to move on to a little bit of economic development. Um, the Meadowbrook property over at Northfield and Rockside is, well, especially the one side is completely vacant or, or almost virgin, almost mm -hmm. completely vacant. Mm -hmm. what, um, what would you like to see happen over there? Well, <clears throat> the Meadowbrook area is privately owned and I'm sure you know that the owner is, we've tried to work with the owner many times and there's always a stumbling, stumbling block somewhere along the way. Now with Target being gone because um, during the last major rainstorm, the roof had cave, caved in and now I believe the building's totally down. Um, the few tenants they do have are there to stay. New tenants, I would like to see some. A real good store come in there. I suggested Myers. I've also suggested other big box stores, but 
I'm only one person, and that area actually is governed by another council person, but it's up to our administration and our economic developer to work with Mr. Goudreau, that's who owns Meadowbrook, and whatever would come into his area I would, will be greatly appreciated, and I'm sure that he'll have lots of people coming in and out of that area, and it wouldn't be vacant for very long. It's just who he would like to see come in there. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if it was up to you to decide what could go there, what, who would you like to, you mentioned Myers. I mentioned Myers, and well, I'm sure Costco's maybe want to go in there, but there's other, there's newer places that are coming in. I um, actually, my area is strictly residential. I have only one business, which is Sunoco, which is your local gas station. And um, as far as talking about the big box stores, I usually like to take care of um, my own needs with the neighborhood uh, that I live in, if I have an area there. And whatever came into that area, I would go and uh, buy my wares. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and a little further down on Rockside um, is, is, of course, the Auto Mile. and. Um, I understand that Tim Lally Chabalet is building a new facility in Warrensville Heights and um, would be leaving the city. What's, um, what, do you, what, what do you see happening over there? Do you, are there talks about filling that vacancy? I have no idea. <clears throat> I understand that, I would, matter of fact, I was just talked to, told about the, the Lally property being sold or they're going to be moving this afternoon. Um, I've always been a uh, dedicated customer to the Lally family, and I uh, hate to see them go, but if it's a matter of surviving this new economy and uh, they're gonna be happy, they have to do what's right for themselves. And as far as what would be there, I don't have any idea. Does, does their impending move make you any a little concerned about the vitality of the auto mile or, or yeah. no the auto mile is thriving very well mm -hmm. they have helped the city so much with many donations matter of fact they just gave us i believe a large check to provide us with a new canine dog for our police force and um, when we have to go out for different functions and talk to anybody at the auto mile their wallets are, um, I shouldn't say that, their checkbook is always open to the city of Bedford. They have treated us very graciously. Uh, what do you, what would you consider are you most proud of about Bedford? About Bedford? Mm -hmm. It's people. The idea that I can really call it my home because I lived in Bedford. I'm living here almost 48 years. I came from Garfield Heights, but when I came here, this is the city that I've lived the longest in. I enjoy my neighbors. I enjoy everything around us. I love our weekly uh, festivals in the summertime. And we have a unique area called Bedford Falls. And when, now that we're even surrounded by the Metro Parks, it's even more prettier in the fall. I just like the quaintness of our city and I don't think I want to leave. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to say about your candidacy and why people should vote for you on November 3rd? Yes, I am proud of, <clears throat> of who I am, what I've done, and I appreciate everybody that has believed in me for the last 20 years. I would like to carry on this because my my thing is to always help another person, and I've done that very well. The phone rings in the middle of the night. I'm there for you. You can call me anytime. I'm not just the council lady at election time. I am your council lady 24-7. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And, and thank you, thank, Ray. And thank you for joining us. I appreciate please it. Please also check out the debates of the Bedford School Board. And please check back to cleveland.com to read stories about the debates, issues, and candidates for the upcoming election on November 3rd and early voting is already underway. Thank you.